Hi team, I hope you're all well. Today I'm going to do my recent reads for the second half of November. I managed to finish seven books in the second half of November, so four of which I own, three of which I do not. So the first book I'm going to talk to you about is Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. I gave this a four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. I loved the magic system in this. It was very atmospheric. It was very chunky, but I just really enjoyed it. It took me a while to get through. This was on my October TBR and I ended up falling massively behind with the buddy read on this. So I'm so glad I finally managed to finish it in the month of November. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it overall. It was very, very good. I do think this is a very good starter for anybody wanting to dip their toe in the Brandon Sanderson adult fantasy, high fantasy um, genre. Uh, on the basis, <laughs> Brandon Sanderson gets his own high fantasy genre at this point. He needs it. Um, on the basis that it's quite... I found it quite easy going. I've tried to start Miss Born before now. I'm going to try again in January with Anna and Catherine, which is who I've already read this with. But I think this has really given me a good introduction, much better than uh, Miss Born was going to do. Everybody recommends either Miss Born or this one to start off with if you're dipping your toe into the Sanderson world. But um, I think this is a really good one. I'm not saying that Miss Born isn't. It probably is. It's just that I was, over, I was too intimidated by the book and I allowed that to affect how I was reading it so i'm looking forward to picking that one up in january i cannot wait actually so this one is following a prince called prince radon who lives in a place called Kayo. i'm trying to see if i can remember how much of this i can remember off the top of my head without looking at the back of the book um and he is getting ready to marry a woman called princess celine who is he doesn't know, but she's on her way over early for the wedding, a week early, because they have been exchanging letters, that's it. Um, so they've never met before. She's on her way over a week early to come and meet him. And um, this is like a marriage of convenience, basically, to bring an alliance together of their both their people. Now, just outside of Kayo, I think that's how you pronounce it, I can't remember. Just outside of the city of Kayo, there is a city called Elantris where... Uh, magic used to thrive and things like that and then about a decade ago the magic system was dying and it was making people very very sick so they walled the city off and now the king uh prince raiden's father uh will banish people that get sick with the magic because you can still become sick with the magic will banish them to elantris to essentially die out however before princess celine can get to kayo um Prince Raiden becomes sick with the magic and the king banishes his son to Elantris and tells the people of the city that his son has died. So when Princess Celine shows up a few days later, she finds out that her husband has died. Um, so even though they haven't gotten married because her husband's died, because Prince Raiden's died, um, she is automatically married to him then. So she's part of the family and she this becomes her city then. But she wants to know more because she's not sure that the truth is being told to her so she starts digging and she finds out more and more stuff we're following the chap each chapter follows either princess celine prince raiden or another guy called raithan who is like a man of god essentially and he kind of i think i can't fully remember now what his aim is i can't remember if he's trying to get control of the city and he wants to be end up in the king's seat i can't remember now but he's faffing about with Elantris a little bit and then Princess Celine wants to start helping the people of Elantris because she realises they're actually not just dying off these people are actually living and making lives for themselves and it, it's just very very good I really enjoyed it there is politics in here which I don't usually like in books but it's not too heavy I managed to follow it very very easily and I enjoyed the romance that went on in here as well it was just really really good so yeah I really enjoyed this one a lot I gave it four out of five stars I do recommend for a Brandon Sanderson high fantasy newbie so do check this one out my apologies if it gradually gets darker the weather is shocking outside um and I've got pins and needles in my foot next I read one by one by Ruth Ware which is a murder mystery thriller set in the French Alps this is following several different actually we're only following the points of view from two different people but we are following several different characters I think overall there are 12 different characters in this to start off with we're basically following a company called Snoop who 
is a company in which they have made this app where you can connect your Spotify, for example, make a, an account, connect your Spotify, and you can listen to what somebody else is listening to in the moment. You could listen to what Beyonce is listening to in the moment, if she's listening to something. You can listen to what a partner's listening to at the moment, if they're listening to something. This was brought about by Topher and Ever, who at the time when they made this app, they were in a relationship, a long distance relationship, and they thought it was a good way of connecting themselves to each other. Being able to listen to the same music at the same time, it made them feel more connected across the miles. Now they ended up obviously going nationwide with this app, they brought more people in, so we've got Rick, we've got Indigo, who's Topher's PA, we've got uh, I can't remember all of the character names because there's so many. Um, Elliot, Miranda, Tiger Blue, Carl. But then we also have Liz, who is somebody who used to work for Snoop. However, she left. I can't fully remember now what happened to her, but she left the company about three years ago. Now, all of these people have been invited to, on a retreat to the French Alps to go skiing. But there is an underlying thing that's going on within this story that I'm not going to tell you about because it will spoil it. But uh, that is the reason why they've gone to on this trip, basically. Um, and Liz is like a little field mouse. She's very, very quiet. She's one of the people we get the opinion from. The people in this story are Danny and Erin. These two people, these are the two people that run the chalet where the people of Snoop are going to go and stay. And we are then get the other point of view from Erin. So we get Liz's point of view and Erin's point of view. And both of these characters are have got secrets. Basically, one by one, each of these characters are getting picked off. And we're not sure who the killer is. And that's basically the story. It's a murder mystery. <laughs> it's very good. I enjoyed it. I gave it four out of five stars. This is my second book that I've read by Ruth Ware. And I gave both of them four out of five stars. The other one was Turn of the Key. So I enjoyed this. I thought it was really good. I know a lot of people have gotten a bit bored with it because it's just a bog standard murder mystery. But I think that's a good thing. Like, you sometimes you just need a bog standard murder mystery where there's no magic in it. There's no um you know sinister too well too sinister it's murder mystery it's going to be sinister um you know there's no massive big twists and turns that will just blow your mind and you're like holy shit this is the best book in the world it's just a bog standard murder mystery but i really enjoyed it it was great so i gave it four out of five stars then i read pages and co book one tilly and the book wanderers by anna james i freaking love this story i gave this five out of five stars it's one of my new favorite series i've only read the first one it's one of my new favorite middle grade series i loved it so much i cannot wait to get physical copies of the books because i need to be able to tab them up um when i listen to the other ones i just loved it so much from literally like page one I loved it. I just knew it was going to be a new favourite. So this is following a young girl called Tilly whose grandparents run a bookstore called Pages and Co. She's called Tilly Pages and she lives with the grandparents because her father has um, died. She's been told that her father's died and her mother basically left her, abandoned her when she was a young baby and she's not sure what happened because her grandparents don't know what happened. And basically Tilly's got this ability, well it turns out the bookshop's got this ability to bring your characters from your favourite books to life. So Tilly can see Anne of the Green Gables, she can see Alice in Wonderland and she doesn't realise at the time that this is a thing that can happen in the bookshop. Her grandparents know about it, she doesn't but they've been keeping it a secret until they feel she's ready to find out. But obviously Anne has visited her and then Alice has visited her and she's starting to piece it all together. And she just keeps going on adventures, she can be dragged into a book basically and it turns out this is a whole thing book wandering is a whole thing and her family is one of the families that can do it so um and the story just kind of goes from there it's just so magical it's so whimsical it's just beautiful i loved it so much um it was just incredible. I really, really loved it. I gave it a five out of five stars. It was so, so good. I can't believe I've been sitting on that series. It was so good. Then I read The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. I gave this four out of five stars. This was really, really good. The writing style is beautiful. It's atmospheric. I just had a great time with this. I was so worried it was going to be too flowery for me, but it wasn't. It's a very slow story. The action, if you like, only kicks off in about the last 20 pages or so. I think this... Has 
has like a very long build up to what is going to be a very very good story i reckon this is following Vasia, a young girl in fact it's following it's more than that I, it's more than what i thought it was going to be in a good way so we're following Vasia's family basically and uh, we mostly follow her as the story goes on but to start off with she's grown up with her siblings being told by her kind of like she kind of runs the house essentially because Vasya's mother died at childbirth when she gave birth to Vasya and uh, so her, there's just her dad and her siblings that live at home and there is this woman there that kind of, she's an older woman and she just kind of runs the place essentially, makes them food, cleans, keeps the children looked after and things like that. She's almost like a nanny. Um, I think she's called Dunya if I remember and she tells the children uh, stories of sorcery folklore and the winter king and basically tales of old magic that are frowned upon by the church and the kids kind of thrive off these stories the kids do you know what i mean the thing is Vasya can see the house spirits that guard in her home and she knows that some of these stories are not just folklore and store other stories she knows that they are real and she basically we follow her family over several years growing up so we start off with Vasya as a very young girl and towards the end of the book it's i don't i can't remember if it's spe specifically specified but i reckon she's probably around 14 13 14 towards the end of the book she's about seven when we start the book off so we follow the family over about seven year period um she's got an older sister two older brothers i think and then her dad does remarry and she ends up with a younger sister as well um and it's just very very good i just really enjoyed this i enjoyed following the family on this journey i enjoyed seeing where it was going to go i cannot wait to pick the next one up um and like in next weekend basically and i'm just i cannot wait to pick the next one up and i'm just so glad i finally started to read this i am reading this as part of the winter night trilogy read along that's being hosted by meg i'll leave a link to the announcement video down below if you want to go and check it out this is running from november through till january where we read the whole trilogy and yeah i'm having a great time with it so really enjoyed this one i gave it four out of five stars very excited to continue with the series i can see it getting better and better then I read Hollow Pox, The Hunt for Morrigan Crow, which is the third in the Morrigan Crow series by Jessica Townsend. Morrigan Crow is a young girl who is deemed to be a cursed child and at the age of 11 she is thought to die on her 11th birthday essentially. She lives in this place where um, every year children kind of go up for sale if you like to become apprentices and she ends up she doesn't think she's going to get bought because of the cursed child thing and this man called jupiter north swoops in and buys her up and as it turns out she is not cursed there is something else going on and he takes her to the place of nevermore where she finds out that there is a lot more to life than she thought and it's just fantastic magic systems um just so much going on in this i really really enjoy it and it's just such a good time i had a great time with this i gave this four out of five stars it was so good i really did have a good time i think i do think that this could get five ha if i read it back to back with nevermore and wondersmith which both of those got five stars i think my mood hasn't been great this month and it's taken me a long time to get through this and uh yeah i do think this could get five stars if i read it back to back with the other two books so i really enjoyed it though four out of five stars it was great and then finally i read dark whispers by vashti hardy i gave this four stars this is the second in the bright storm adventure series by vashti hardy and this is following twins who in the first book basically their father is on an expedition and it is brought to like the council's attention if you like that their um expedition was they stole something and their expedition was sort of like a farce and all of the ex explorers are dead now they've died and so basically the kids find out that their father has died but at the same time his name's being dragged through the mud and the twins just don't think that's right they think that there's something else going on and they go to try and investigate this with a crew on a big air 
ship thing and it's just a really good time it's a great adventure this one follows straight on from that after they found out the truth about the father they carry on with their journey with the airship and the crew and it's just so good it's very wholesome i love the twins they're so sassy some of the other characters as well are great and i just had a really good time with it i gave it four out of five stars so um I also very quickly wanted to mention the books that I've DNF'd in November as well, just to show you my mood in general. Um, I obviously wasn't having a great month. I was in a slump. I was DNFing. I was just in a bit of a mood in November. Now, I don't know if it's because of my mood that I've DNF'd so many books or whether it's just that I have been picking up books that I've not particularly enjoyed. Um, but I DNF'd six books in the month of November. So one of them was Murder Most Unladylike by Robin Stevens. It's now in a bag ready to go to a charity shop because I'm sick of the sides of it. Um, I DNF this, actually this isn't my mood, I DNF'd it on the basis that on the first page the book was relatively racist and the subsequent pages, I got 13 pages in before I DNF'd it, the subsequent pages there was about four counts of fat shaming that I read in those 13 pages and I just was not having it. So I DNF'd the book. Um, to those of you that managed to get through this book, I take my hat off to you, um, you're very very patient. I believe it gets better and the series is very very good overall. But this is a middle grade murder mystery type book following two young girls, one of whom is um, Asian, the other one is British as far as I'm aware. And they go to school in England and there is a murder in the school but the body ends up going missing before one of the other girls can tell the rest of the school what's going on. The body goes missing and then the whole point is that they need to try and prove that there was even a murder to begin with um, and then try and solve the murder. The friend, the English friend is a relative, is, is, just makes the Asian friend feel this big and I already felt it in the first page. Um, there is a comment made about the fact that um, basically that they are Sherlock and Holmes but she would never make a good Sherlock, uh, she would never make a good Holmes because Holmes would never be Asian and I was like what and i actually made a comment about this in a vlog i will leave a link to it up here but I, I made a comment about this in a vlog about has nobody has robin stevens never seen elementary in which lucy lou plays plays um watson so but as it turns out this book i was watching gav and jade's live after i dnf the book because jade hated it gav really enjoyed it he does see the problems in it but he overall he enjoyed it because the book apparently gets better as you carry on with it um well, it gets worse before it gets better, but apparently in the end it does get better. But I didn't know this, but this is set in like the very early 1900s, I believe, or the, even the late 1800s. So I didn't know at the time. So in theory, within the book, obviously there was no such thing as elementary, but there is now. And I feel like Robin Stevens should... I don't know, no better maybe than to write something like that, even despite the time period. I don't know whatever it pissed me off and i hated it so i dnf'd it whatever i've, I've made my decision <laughs> it's done then i dnf'd shadow of the fox by julie kagawa i will leave a picture of it here i know this is a lot of people really enjoy this book i just didn't like it i didn't i couldn't follow the character what annoyed me was that i thought the main character was about 11 years old and she's not i think this is ya but i thought she was like a child and she's not. Her portrayal is not very good. What I don't, the other thing that annoyed me as well is that the prologue, I think it's the prologue or the first chapter is following one character. Something happens to that character and then we're following two di other different characters. I assume that other character, her story comes in at some point later on. But I preferred the first chapter to the rest of what I read. So I <laughs> want a story about that first girl. That's it. I don't, I don't care for the other two characters. I, I DNF'd it. I got 25% in. I DNF'd it. I didn't like it. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it is what it is. Then I DNF'd These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. I'm devastated about this one. I've got to be honest with you. I'm really, really gutted because I was highly anticipating this one to the point that I got an ER copy and then actually messaged the publishers to get a physical copy because it's so chunky. I do now struggle to read... Um, with my migraines, I struggle to read really long books on my on my Kindle, which I didn't know at the time when I got approved for this on NetGalley, but it came about when I was reading Adi LaRue. I've mentioned it several times now in vlogs and stuff. But yeah, they actually sent me a physical arc through and now I'm really, really devastated that I've DNF'd it. I got 100 pages in, but I just... 
the politics kept pulling me out of the story and it was doing my head in i was getting sick of it i didn't feel the romance in here at all it just does not feel like a romance whatsoever and i just kept getting pulled out by the politics by don't get me wrong the writing is very very beautiful so the descriptions of um so the descriptions of shanghai are really really beautiful but they're extremely descriptive to the point that it's distracting and it kept pulling me out of the story and i just could not get my teeth into the story at all every time i was about to sink my teeth into it and really like you know dive in and be like okay here we go here's here's the good stuff it just pulled me out again i just couldn't i couldn't do it anymore it was doing my head in i was bored to death i'm really really sorry um <laughs> thank you so much to Hoddy for sending me a copy of this anyway and to Kate for being so understanding about my migraines and wanted a physical arc of this I'm so sorry I've ended up DNFing it I am 100% in the minority the majority of people have really really loved this but I am in a group on Instagram and all of us that have read tried to read this have DNF'd it there's one of us that's managed to get through of it through it and she gave it two stars I think so that's a real shame and I'm really really bummed to be fair about it but um yeah I ended up DNFing this which is unfortunate so bummer this is a romeo and juliet retelling by the way set in 1926 in shanghai um then i dnf'd eleanor oliphant is completely fine by gail honeyman i was going to say it holly gailman then um that's not right is it this i it's my contemporary book club's pick for november and i've dnf'd it i got i didn't get that far you know i got several chapters in maybe 50 pages and i did decided to dnf it honestly i found that eleanor the whole point of this is that it is relatively depressing but towards the end i think quite uplifting i think eleanor she lives alone she's quite happy with her life but she drinks like two bottles of vodka on the weekend and she's got some stuff going on that she's refusing to deal with essentially i think that's the be all and end all of it and i think we just follow her it's literally a contemporary about following her in her life and i think it's about her possibly finding herself and realizing that there are some underlying issues and trying to fix them i think that's what's going on unfortunately my mental health has not been great this month and i just could not deal i was not in the right frame of mind for dealing with a, such a depressive character and for that reason i've ended up dnf in the book i don't know if this is a permanent dnf or a temporary dnf but i actually went into this not being 100 percent sure it's going to be my thing anyway i do know that it's very very good i've been told by a million different people it's very very good so i might go back to it at some point when i'm feeling a bit better but this just was not the month for me to be picking this up so i did dnf that i dnf'd fable by adrian young which again i'm devastated about absolutely devastated because i was really enjoying this um i've dnf'd it on a technicality i got to page 70 she ended up on a ship this is following fable who is a young woman who was abandoned by her father on an island who basically said if you can get back to us then you can have your rightful place by my side but otherwise this is where you're staying so she spent the last several years trying to um scavenge and save up so that she can get back to her home place and she t enlists the help of a guy called west who has another agenda going on i don't know what that agenda is because i didn't get far enough but i got 70 pages in and she finally managed to get herself on a boat and then this opening chapter opened up with her waking up on the boat and she described how uh, the boat was um she just described in in vivid detail how a boat feels now i suffer with severe seasickness <laughs> so i don't know if this has ever happened to another person please let me know in the comments down below if it has happened to you i got severe i'm doing it now i feel very very dizzy i got severe seasickness um reading this book around about the 70 page mark and um it's I, i'm devastated about it because i was really really enjoying it i did try and plow through it again a second time but i just got seasick again and it lasted like the whole day with me as well because i couldn't stop thinking about it so i'm absolutely gutted about this absolutely devastated um just heartbroken in all honesty because i really really wanted to read this and my friend laura said that i was going to enjoy it as well so i'm really gutted but yeah i had to dnf that one and then finally i dnf the court of miracles by kester grant because i was bored as hell i just <sighs> was bored but i was bored i don't think see how this is a lame is retelling i don't get the six of crows vibes from it i just got 
bored. There was like one story going on in the beginning that I was really interested in and then the story seemed to change halfway through and I just didn't get it. I felt like there was two halves of a book came together and I just didn't get it. It just confused. So yeah, I DNF like six books in the month of November which is, I think it was only six anyway, <laughs> it could be more, which is rare for me. So, uh, yeah, overall, two of them I'm pretty gutted about, to be fair, so, um, yeah. But, anywho, it is what it is. My slump was not great, to be honest. I think maybe I've just got burnout towards the end of the month, which doesn't bode well for December, but I've got a lot of books on my December TBR that I'm really hyped about. So yeah, overall I had a good time. So the last thing to do is to wrap up with Believeathon. Let's see how many of these prompts I've actually managed to complete with the middle grade that I've read. So overall I've read 10 middle grade books this month. So let's see what I managed to complete. There were 13 challenges. I'm gonna have to double up on some of these it's fine um so the first one was to get the key and that was to read a mystery so i read potkin and stubbs the haunting of pelican city by sophie green then the next one was to get the fingerprints and that was to re read a book written by an author of from a different culture as you so i think that whispers by vashti hardy would, would count for that one then to get the scream you need to listen to an audiobook or read a book out loud um Again, the Dark Whispers by Vashti Hardy will count for that. I listened to that on audio. I listened to Gargantus on audio. I listened to Amelia Fang on audio. I listened to Frostheart on audio. I listened to Pages and Co on audio. So I listened to loads on audio. I definitely got that one. Then next to get the torn pages, you need to read a book with a supernatural element. Again, Potkin and Stubbs, The Haunting of Pelican City has a supernatural element in it. Then to get the crown, you need to read a book that's set in an alternate world to your own. Amelia Fang and the Unicorn Lord is set in a world alternate to my own by Laura Ellen Anderson. To get this building, you need to read a book that features ghosts. So I read Sheets by Brenna Thumler. I really had a good time with this one. I also then read Delicates, which is the next one in the series as well. Also has ghosts in it. The Dagger is to read a book that's set in a dangerous setting. So for this one, I read Frostheart, Escape from Aurora by Jamie Littler. I loved that book. It was so good. Then to get the backpack, you need to read a book by a new to you author. Anna James is a new to me author. Then to get the footprints, you need to read a book that has a prominent villain in it. So Hollow Pox by Jessica Townsend has a prominent villain in it. So does actually, so does um, Potkin and Stubbs and also Frostheart also gargantus to be fair um a lot of the books have prominent villains in and uh dark whispers by vashti hardy the hand mirror is to read a book with a beautiful cover i mean i'm not being funny but when does a middle grade not have a beautiful cover let's face it because all of these are gorgeous um take your pick <laughs> basically then you need to get the chain, which is to read a book that features a colourful cast of friends. So I read Pages and Co uh, by Anna James, that one counts. Then the Flash of Lightning is to read a book that incorporates folk tales. So for me, Gargantus works for this one by Thomas Taylor. I loved that one, it was so good. Then to get the shadow, you need to get a book that was first published in 2020. And for that one, this was published in 2020. This was published in 2020. This was published in 2020. So I have three of those. So I have managed to complete all of the challenges, which is fantastic. I have fin finished my mystery which is great news. <laughs> I was starting to sweat there towards the end of the month. Um, but yeah, I had a really good time with my reading in November. I did get slumpy. It's just one of them things that happens. Um, there's not much I can do about it, but I'm just hoping that I can come out of this. I do feel much better, actually. I was hosting some sprints with Molly last night, which was... Um, Sunday night the last Sunday in the month of November when I'm filming this um last night with Molly and Jade and then Gav and Mel joined us as well and it was such a good time and I managed to get loads of reading done which is awesome so it's kind of kick-started me again I think I've just been really missing reading sprints so 
uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to keep my eye open for those a little bit more, I think. Uh, maybe host some myself, we'll see. But yeah, I had a really good reading month. I hope you guys had a really good reading month as well. Do let me know in the comments down below what you read this month. And if you read any of the books that I read, let me know in the comments down below as well. And leave me a blue heart for Believe-a-thon um, in the comments down below if you got to the end of this video. Let me know you are here. And I shall see you next time. Bye for now.